Hello, so we're going to have a look here at tradable pollution permits. So first of all, let's start off by defining what a tradable pollution permit is. So definition. So a tradable po uh, pollution permit is a permit that is issued by a government. Uh, obviously, once they've issued that permit, it allows a fixed amount of pollution to be created. So a permit is a permit that is issued by a government to allow a fixed amount of pollution to be created. This permit can be used by the owner of the permit or sold to another firm. So just to recap, a tradable pollution permit is a permit that is issued by a government to allow a fixed amount okay so it's only a certain amount of pollution is allowed uh, this permit can be used by the owner so typically a firm can use the permit and allowing them to produce a specific amount of pollution or the uh, firm the owner of the uh, pollution permit could sell it sell their permit to another uh, firm missed the r off there to sell to another firm so obviously if they weren't uh producing as much and weren't generating as much pollution obviously they don't need the pollution permit so what they could do is they could sell the pollution permit to another firm okay so that's our definition it's a permit that is issued by a government that allows a fixed amount of pollution to be created and this permit can be used so they can use it to generate pollution or they can sell the permit if they don't uh, don't require the permit. Okay, uh, an application. So we've got a really great example of a tradable pollution permit scheme, uh, and that is the EU ETS. EU ETS stands for the European Union Emissions Trading Scheme, and that began in 2005 and is still ongoing so the eu ets is a really good example of a tradable pollution permit scheme okay so we've got our definition we've got a relevant bit of application now we're going to focus on uh, analyzing uh, the tradable pollution permit scheme and focus on how it would correct a particular market failure so let's start off by discussing the market failure uh, that it corrects so obviously, it's used to correct pollution, okay? And pollution is, as we know, uh, an example of a negative externality in production, okay? So we use a tradable pollution permit scheme uh, to solve the market failure of obviously pollution and pollution is an example of a negative externality in production so if we had an essay question on uh, tradable pollution permits and how it would be used to correct the market failure we would start off by outlining obviously pollution uh, is generate is an example of a negative externality in production and obviously explain why that leads to to a market failure and then we'll introduce the tradable pollution permit scheme and how that would use to be used to correct the uh, market failure okay so now let's have a look at the diagram and analyze this diagram so let's start off with our axes okay so this is going to be quantity and this is going to be the quantity of permits and here we've got the price. And again, this is the price of the permit. And what we're going to have now is we're going to have a perfectly inelastic supply curve. 
so it's a vertical line and we're just going to call that s and we're going to call this quantity q okay so the reason why the supply curve is perfectly inelastic is because the government only releases a fixed amount of permits which would correlate to a fixed amount of pollution that they would allow so that's the reason why the supply curve is perfectly inelastic because there's only a specific amount of permits that the government is going to put onto the market and the reason why they only put a specific amount of permits onto the market is because they're only going to allow a specific amount of pollution so let's just make a note of that supply curve perfectly Supply curve perfectly inelastic as government only provide a specific amount of permits to allow only a specific amount of pollution. Okay, so the supply curve is perfectly inelastic. Governments only provide a specific amount of permits to allow only a specific amount of pollution. So that's the reason why the supply curve is perfectly inelastic. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, draw a downward sloping demand curve and label that with a D. And what we're going to label here is we're just going to label this price P. Okay, so the demand curve is downward sloping. We're going to explain why the demand curve is downward sloping. Because it would make sense that the lower the price of permits, the more uh, permits firms would demand. Low price, higher demand for permits. High price, obviously there'd be a lower demand for permits so that's the reason why the demand curve is downwards sloping so we've kind of looked at the basics of our diagram uh, so far uh, so that's what we've got here so what we now need to look at is we need to look at our market equilibrium so our market equilibrium in our diagram we have a market equilibrium of uh, QP. Okay, so we have a quantity of permits of Q um, at the price of permit at P. And then what happens now is firms have to make a decision about whether it's cost effective to purchase the tradable pollution permits or invest in green technology. So at this specific price, firms have to make a decision about whether they're going to invest in green technology or not. OK, so that's the decision they have to make at the market equilibrium of QP. To invest in green So firms decide whether to invest in green technology or to purchase pollution permits. So at the market equilibrium of QP, firms must decide whether to invest in green technology or to purchase um, pollution permits.
And obviously, firms are going to choose the most cost effective option. It's cost effective option, i.e. they're going to choose the one that's going to be cheaper. OK, so at the market equilibrium of QP, firms decide whether to invest in green technology or to produce or to purchase pollution permits. And firms choose the most cost, a cost effective option out of green investing in green technology or purchasing pollution permits. And obviously they're looking here at the uh, cheaper option. So if investing... in green technology is not cost effective then this will increase demand for pollution permits because obviously if they decided that it's not cost effective to purchase the green technology they're obviously going to have to find uh, they're just going to have to continue producing the way they are and by continuing to produce the way they are may mean that therefore they're going to uh, they're going to pre uh, pollute the atmosphere uh, more and therefore they're going to need more pollution permits to carry on op carry on operating the way they are are so what this does this will increase the demand as mentioned so this will increase demand from d to d1 so now we're going to add the new demand curve to our diagram uh, and we'll draw it there d1 and we'll just put an out upwards outwards an arrow showing the outward shift of the demand curve and we'll add in our new price here p1 so with that increase in demand for the pollution permit, because obviously they've decided it's not cost effective uh, to invest in green technology, the demand for pollution permits has increased. And what we've seen is we've seen an outward shift of the demand curve from uh, D to D1. We've seen an increase in the price of the pollution permits from P to P1. And obviously... Uh, quantity has remained the same because obviously as we said at the very beginning uh, the government supplies only a specific amount of permits so increased demand d to d1 increased price p to p1 we've got a new equilibrium of q p1 and we see that in our diagram so what what happens now? Well, again, firms have got a decision to make now. So obviously, if firms uh, have not invested in green technology and bought more pollution permits, they're obviously therefore polluting more. By buying more, up more pollution permits, increasing the demand for them, the price of these pollution permits is going to rise. Uh, and therefore, that increases the incentive for firms to invest in green technology. So the increase in price... Uh, increases the incentive for firms to invest in green technology. OK, so hopefully by the price rising due to the uh, very uh, due to the fixed amount of permits and obviously the increased demand for them, it would therefore mean that firms were going to swap over to green technology. And hopefully that therefore would reduce the amount of pollution uh, that is generated. OK, but in order for a real uh, a pollution permit scheme to be uh, effective, uh, what we would expect is that the sub supply of permits to and the quantity therefore of them to decrease over time because obviously if the 
quantity of permits decreases over time, again, that will help push up the price and further encourage firms to switch to greener technologies. So I'm going to carry on up here now at the top right hand corner. An effective scheme An effective scheme reduces the number of permits over time. So how would this be represented in our diagram? Well, this would be represented by a decrease in supply from S to S1. OK, and I'm going to draw that now on the diagram. S1, arrow going to the left. Q1, again, arrow going to the left. OK, so what we can see here is we see the decrease in the supply from S to S1. There is a uh, control, therefore, the reduced quantity of permit from Q to Q1, we see a contraction along D1. So we move up D1, don't we? We see a contraction along D1. Uh, and what we see is therefore an increase in the price from P1. I'm going to add in a new price here. It's going to be P2. From P1 to P2. OK, so with an effective scheme reducing the number of permits over time, the supply of permits decreases from S to S1. We see, therefore, that obviously the quantity of permits decreases uh, from Q to Q1. Uh, and we see a contraction along the D1. And we therefore we see an increase in the price from P1 to P2. What does that do? Will that increase price further increases the incentive for firms to invest in green technology? And that is our diagram explained uh, very thoroughly. We've explained how a tradable pollution permit scheme would work. Obviously, we've explained that the supply curves are perfectly inelastic uh, because there is a fixed amount of permits that are allowed onto the market. And that fixed amount of permits uh, is is related to the amount of pollution that a government is allowing allowing to occur. We see that there is an equilibrium price originally and at that equilibrium price firms have to make a decision about what the most cost effective option is going to be and typically uh, initially we will see that firms will just con continue to uh, pollute in the manner that they are and in doing so they will therefore demand more permits obviously demanding more permits pushes up the price of the uh of these permits and therefore it increases the incentive for firms to switch to more greener technologies some will switch over to green technologies however some will continue to they will say well it's not cost effective to uh, switch to greener top technology so we'll just carry on polluting uh, as we are and using the same methods of operation uh, but then obviously governments in order to make an effective scheme should reduce the number of permits i.e. reducing the number of permits reduces the amount of pollution that's being generated. Uh, and therefore, again, that reduction in the number of permits, uh, meaning a reduction in the amount of pollution, would further push up the price of the permits. And therefore, it would again increase the incentive for firms to switch to uh, green technology. And by doing so, that greener technology should reduce the negative externalities in production uh, and hopefully achieve the social optimum. So if we were to make sure we were answering this, uh, an exam question on this uh, properly, we would make sure that our final part of our 
answer would focus linking back to how it would correct the market failure. So we'll just make a note of that now, that the increase in price increases the incentive for firms to invest in green technology. So reducing permits reduces the amount of pollution uh, because we're, the government's only allowing a certain amount and obviously there's an increase in green the use of green technology uh, which again is going to help to reduce the amount of pollution and obviously therefore uh, we should hopefully achieve the social optimum and correct the market failure. And the other thing is that firms may actually say, well, it's just costing us too much to continue to operate the way they are and therefore they may reduce output as well. So that could be another thing which is going to help achieve the social optimum and correct the market failure. Increase cost costs of production firms would therefore decrease their output and again that would lead to a that would obviously mean that there's reduced pollution and therefore achieve the social optimum hopefully so just linking back to how this scheme would correct the market failure of negative externalities in production. Well, the number of permits correlates to the amount of pollution that a government is going to allow. So reducing the number of permits over time is going to allow for a reduction in pollution. Hopefully as well, due to the increased cost of these permits, due to demand and uh, changes in demand and supply. Again, people would therefore, firms would switch to greener technology, again, reducing pollution. And hopefully that should get closer to the social optimum and correct the market failure. In addition, obviously the costs of production are now rising because obviously you've got to purchase these uh, permits. So firms may decide that actually it's just costing them too much and therefore they're going to reduce their output. And obviously by not producing as much, the amount of pollution will also fall and again, get closer to the social optimum and correct the market failure.